Guys, I know this might be hard to grasp, but just because a film is in one of the top 10 highest grossing films of all time doesn't necessarily mean that that translates to the actual quality of the film. I mean, I don't even have to list off the names I'm talking about. Editor Me will just put in the movie posters right here. They're no-brainers. But the biggest offender to this fact is the film that takes the number one spot on that list. Maybe they should use all that money they made to buy a better papyrus font for their title. Hey, what's up guys? Super Sam Ram here, and I'm so glad I finally got to make a papyrus joke after this lack of a film. I mean, I even went so far as to formatting my video script in the closest thing to this font. I mean, <laughs> it's called Paprika! Alright, I'm gonna plug you back in, little fella. I mean, hey, if they had just put the title in this font, it may have been more respected by pe- I can't even finish that sentence with a straight face. Do you ever have that one movie that is so overrated that you can't- think why people think so fondly of it. That's Avatar for me. Not only is it the highest grossing film of all time, but is unofficially certified the most overrated film in existence. Among that list, of course, is Frozen, The Hunger Games, Titanic, Twilight, and Lion King. Wait, how did that get in there? Also, yes, Star Wars can be overrated at times, but there's, there's a big difference between Films like that and friggin' Twilight. Star Wars and films like the MCU and Pixar are special cases because... Look, some things deserve to be overrated, you know? But when an overrated film has glaring flaws, what's the justification of the popularity? Films that are praised for being one-trick pony or just have a gimmick that, sta that stands out doesn't automatically make it a masterpiece. That's what brings us... To Avatar. A film that is praised for being ahead of its time. Okay, let me adjust this real quick. Don't throw that BS at me thinking you're gonna make a point, okay? I hate how we all see this movie as being ahead of its time. To put this into perspective, this film came out in 2009, and it was praised for half of this movie being set in a CGI world. But Christopher Nolan would have loved that. And if I'm being honest, it really doesn't look anything special. The only reason people made a big deal about it is because it was made to be seen in 3D. And it was released on Blu-ray with widescreen. The CG artists are looking at that proudly. Like, yeah, we took nine years to, to, to do that. And that's another thing, the film took ten years to make. And yet, people still say it's ahead of its time. I mean, sure, it would be ahead of its time if it actually came out when it was supposed to, in 1999. I look at it way differently if it came out in the late 90s, or the early 2000s. But, you know, James Cameron just wanted to take a 10-year smoke break. The reason I bring this up is because there are films that were released prior that looked way better than Avatar ever did. Iron Man and The Incredible Hulk had some amazing CGI. Those movies took less time in production and still look fantastic. WALL-E has a much more original story with outstanding visuals and minimal dialogue. The point I'm getting at here is that people need to take into account the movie as a whole and stop thinking about the quantity rather than the quality. So in preparation for this video, I rewatched Avatar after 10 years of not doing that, and I can objectively say, yeah, I don't like it. I care about none of the characters in this movie, and all the flaws I had with it 10 years ago still hold up, which I did not expect, because I have matured as a movie critic throughout my 10-year journey. For example, the runtime. Oh, James Cameron, you always love to make sure your movies have extensive runtimes that make people question humanity. Look, movie runtimes rarely bother me. WHAT DO YOU MEAN THIS FILM WAS THREE HOURS?! But this film was actually two hours and 46 minutes long. And, you guessed it, it felt two hours and 46 minutes long. Since I barely care about any of the characters in this movie, it makes it hard for me to sit through two hours and 46 minutes of these characters. So because I don't have that emotional connection and there's scenes that go so slow that just make me question why I'm watching this movie. And it's four slow scenes like that that make the movie so much longer than it actually needs to be. It's because of these slow scenes in the second act that I can't 
appreciate the bombastic third act. Those moments of action don't feel earned. They don't feel they don't feel right at that moment. Your action scenes mean nothing to me if I gave out before the second act even started. It makes sense for films like Titanic or Endgame to be three hours long because it needs to take that time to establish these characters and these relationships so that when the metaphorical slash literal ship sinks, then you have that emotional connection and you can feel impacted by it because you were on the journey with it as it went along. To Avatar's credit, I have to admit, I am a sucker for third act scenes. It's something about third act action scenes. I just, I just really love it. Sure, I've seen action done like this many times before. It was still pretty awesome though, but it means nothing. It means nothing. That's about where my praise for this movie ends. If I don't find the characters or story compelling, how do you expect me to care about the grandiose spectacle that is your third act at the end of this movie? I mean, those scenes just feel empty in my eyes. They look awesome, but they feel empty. That one scene where the military general fights that giant jungle monster, it should have felt awesome, but, and I can't believe I'm about to make this comparison, but it reminded me of a Transformers movie, but you know, with less Michael Bay explosions. I'd also like to point out that the only reason this film was so financially successful was because it was re-released and they started charging more for the tickets, which pissed me off. It's just, it's just so freaking evil from a marketing perspective. Like, why? Why would you do this to us? Seriously, I will never forget how much they fought tooth and nail to make sure this film was as financially successful as possible and that we would remember it for history and time itself to repeat. And all of that added frustration just adds to my distaste for this movie. Avengers Endgame has also been re-released with new footage, which is Marvel's effort to make this the next highest grossing film of all time. It's about time, guys. Let's get Endgame to that number one spot and it's just time for it. Because this masterpiece, this masterpiece, should remain timeless. Not this. This. Oh my god, what is wrong with this movie? I mean, I hate to call any James Cameron film melodramatic or freaking soulless, but that's exactly what this movie is! Huh. Ugh. What are your thoughts on Avatar? Feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below. As always, please like if you did like it, subscribe for more content, show your support ring the bell, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. I have hated this movie since I was six years old. I was six years old when this thing came out. I hated it when I left the movie theater, and I think it's eh, now. I just... But I still don't see why this, this, is your highest grossing film of all time. I don't see it. I do not see it. If you strongly disagree with me, then, what did they say now? Don't at me? Don't at me. Don't at me, bro. I'm gonna take my Black Widow cup and catch me inside.